your Bibles with me this morning to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40 from verse number 3. Isaiah 40 from verse 3. If you don't mind, rise up for the reading of God's word. Amen. God bless you. I want to congratulate the Abiola family. Amen. God bless you. Let's give God a big clap of praise for them. God bless you. Daddy, congratulations. Amen. Dr. Wally, congratulations too. Amen. And to our brother and sister, congratulations. Amen. This is the other salmon here as well. She here? Okay. Congratulations on your celebration as well. The Bible says a voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Someone say prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked places shall be made straight. And the rough places shall be what? Made plain. Then look at the next verse. I want you to read it with power. Amen. Tell the boy, read it with power. With power. I mean, some people are reading it and they're like, come on. I understand it's one o'clock, but read with power. Are you ready? One, two, go. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. As you declare it, may the glory of God be revealed upon your life. Oh, that amen is not born again. As you declare it, may the glory of God be revealed upon your life. Bless your word today. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell them, get ready for divine manifestation. Come on, tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, come on. If they are not talking to you, look for another person. Tell them, get ready for divine manifestation. Come on, come on. Over your life, divine manifestation. In your career, divine manifestation. I don't know who you are, but speak to any area of your life that you are not happy. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Divine manifestation. Divine manifestation. Divine manifestation. Manifestation of joy. Manifestation of grace. You have mouth. Death and life is in the power of the dog speaking. In your finances. In the health of your child. In your marriage. Divine manifestation. Divine manifestation. Come on. Divine. 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 In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Shout amen. God bless you. You may be seated. This is the last quarter of 2019 one of the clear words God said I should announce to you is that he always saves the best for last tell you about God always saves the best for last yes God always likes to save the best for last you know I grew up in in a culture where if they serve you food you don't eat the meat first You know what I'm saying? If you ever go to a party and you eat the meat first, there will be a way your parents will look at you. That look is not a good look. That look is when we get home. <laughs> because they look at you like someone that has a you are greedy. If I tell you the correlate terminology, many of you may not understand it. But, you know, I, I believe that God, you know, he likes to save the best meat for the last. John 2 gives us that example. That's where we got it from. Because he manifested his glory in a party that three days into the party, the whole thing was gone. 
it is the end of the party that the best of it should be there. And they ran out of wine. But the Bible says by the time he changed to water, that's making a way where there is no way. That's changing a desert into a vegetation. On that third day when he changed water to wine, the Bible says they took one of that water that was on the jar that they took it from and gave it to the master of ceremony. And he tasted and said, mm, told the groom, who, who brings the best wine at the end? Men always get the best in front. They put the best in front. The reason why people overlooked you is because they thought you were not the best. So they put someone ahead of you. They missed it because God's ways are higher than mine. So can I tell you, when man is done, that is where God takes over. I announced to somebody under the sound of my voice, the best miracles of 2019 is coming to you. The best breakthrough of 2019 is coming to you. The best healing of 2019 is coming to you. If you believe it, wave your hands and shout hallelujah. He saves the best for last. So in this last quarter, the very best, God's going to give it to you. The glory is in the finishing. John 17, 4. Jesus speaking. He said, I brought glory on earth by finishing the work you've given to me to do. So if God did not answer you at the beginning, if there was no manifestation in your life at the very beginning, it's because God wants to end it with glory in your life. So don't allow another person's blessing another person's manifestation to shake you in the business of god god operates in times and seasons tell about god operates in times and seasons yes and so you need to keep this in mind that god is always at work and he wants to do something great in your life in Bethel. philippians 1 6 being confident of this very thing that he that began a good work in you he will carry it on to completion God will never stop, start a work he will not finish. Is somebody hearing me? God, any work he starts, he will definitely finish it. Faithful is he who has begun that good work in you. The Bible says he will surely bring it to pass. May God bring to pass every good work he has started in your life. So when we talk about divine manifestation, I want to let you know that divine manifestation doesn't happen all of his own day. Divine manifestation happens as a result of divine preparation. A lot of people miss that part. Anything that is going to be great takes time. You see, we're building the church now. We started this building for a while. We didn't start just yesterday. If we was building a box, we would have been done. If we were just building one ramshackled place with some piece of wood, ah, overnight. We just call a bunch of muscle men. Let's do this thing. But because what we're trying to do is not something that is common. So listen to me. Anytime God is trying to do something uncommon in your life, it's not going to happen overnight. Because God wants to finish it well. Didn't you discover that even in the making of man, he didn't make man first. He made man last. So that every error, which he doesn't make errors anyway, he looked at goats. He looked at the way gold breathes. Mm, cannot make man like this. <laughs> he made the dog with big ears. He said, if I make his ears like this, it will just be flabby. Nobody will marry this man. Let's just make it. <laughs> So God took his time to make man on the sixth day. Look at it. After God made man, God did not make any other thing. Oh my God. Can I tell you? After God is done with your life, God will go to rest. You will go to rest. If you believe it, let me hear the loudest. Amen. Yes. So look at all the prepare ye the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Wilderness is not a pretty place. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make streets in the desert, a highway for our God. He talks about every valley. So he talked about issues, things in the lives of people that need to be fixed. 
So perhaps in the journey of your life, you were in a valley. God has to take care of the valley. There are mountains. He has to take care of the mountains. Hills, he has to level the hills. Rough places, he has to make them level. Rugged places, he has to make them smooth. In the second service, I took my time to explain to you that he's creating a highway. A highway. A highway is not a footpath. If the blessing he wants to make in your life is a highway, that means there are multiple blessings that are going to go through it. Multiple blessings cannot come through path. So many of the things that is going on in my life today, I, yes, I may be where I am, doing the things, handling things I'm doing. God has taken time to package me. So when I look back at my life, I see that every suffering that I suffered, the time I was drinking Gary, the time I was walking barefooted, the time I was, God was teaching me resilience. God was helping me to build character. God was teaching me patience. By the grace of God, there is nothing anybody has that ever enters my eye. If you like, drive the latest uh, if you like, drive the latest, uh, uh, I don't know, limousine. I will thank God for you. Because Paul said, I've learned to abase and I've learned to do what? Abound. So, it doesn't mean anything. God had taken every desire for physical stuff away from my life. I learned how not to have. I don't know whether you understand. So, so when God tells me empty your bank account, I didn't start emptying it now. I started emptying it when I had nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So when he tells me, if I bless you with one million, I, I told him, bless me with a million. I give you the whole thing. In fact, I, like I shared one time, I said, I promise God. I said, God, bless me, I will shock you. I said, Lord, in fact, what you did not tell me to give, I will give it. The only thing God will not require from a man is a human sacrifice because his son has already paid it. So whenever God, I'm just trying to make you understand, before God brings you into glorious manifestation, divine manifestation of his glory in your life, he will prepare you. What am I trying to make you understand? Don't abort this process of preparation. Amen. Tell you about stick to the process. Amen. Say it again, stick to the process. I have good news for somebody. No matter what mountain, no matter what valley, the Lord will lead you through it successfully. Yeah. And the scripture ended by saying, and the glory of the Lord shall be what? Revealed. Somebody say it shall be revealed. Yeah. So understand that when God takes his time to process you, it's because of the amount of glory he wants to bring out of you. Tell you about greater glory is coming. Yeah. Yes, you can come out with goodness, but glory is a different level. Tell about glory is a different level. Yes, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And the Bible says, all eyes shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I took time to look at definitions, things like manifestation, so that we can put things in context and we we'll wrap it up with a story. Manifestation is a perceptible, outward, visible expression of a thing or a person made real. So when there's an outward, perceptible, visible expression of a thing, real, that is tangible, that you can say this is a manifestation of something. It's not just something that you are thinking or just something that is just there, but we don't know it's there. No, 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 no. So when you look at divine manifestation, divine manifestation rep represents a revelation or an outward expression of, mark these four things. These are the things that connote divine manifestation. When we say, when we say these are more of divine manifestation, these are the things God wants to show you. Number one, he wants to show you his person. Somebody say he wants to show you his person. So if there's divine manifestation, you don't know God better. You have not had divine manifestation. Number two, he wants to show you his presence. So there's a manifestation of person and presence. Some people say, Pastor, is that not the same thing? It is not. Do you know a man can be in a place, but his effect is not felt? I don't know whether you understand. A man can be in a place and his presence is absent. Okay. How come Jacob said, God is in this what? What? But I didn't what? What, that sim what he was simply saying was, his person was there, but I couldn't feel his presence. I'm not hearing me. 
But when you have an encounter with him and something shifts inside of you, not only did you encounter the person, you encountered the presence. Somebody, not only will you encounter the person of Jesus, you will encounter the presence of Jesus. Let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me help you understand this. That I, I, because this, this third service, I want to teach this thing. No, you cannot just be shouting manifestation. I will manifest. Okay, manifest what? Manifest how? In John chapter 2, the Bible tells us about the story about the people that had the wedding. I hope you know that Jesus was in that wedding and wine went off. Anybody agree with me? Am I speaking to somebody? So, his person was invited to the wedding. But his presence was not manifested until he was engaged. So that tells me that you could have person and not presence. There are many believers that have the person of Jesus, but they don't carry the presence of Jesus. My God, is, am I speaking to somebody? You could be praying to a Jesus that you have not engaged. Today in this service, by the authority in the name of Jesus, not only will you know the person, you will have the presence. Am I making sense to somebody? It was until they engaged the presence that water changed to wine. What that simply means is when you engage the presence, when you encounter that presence of Jesus, you will see a direct shift in your life. Something will give. That thing that you've been looking for a long time will change. Yeah, we've been going to church for a long time in Nigeria. We were born in this thing. <laughs> we, were, we were going to all night services. We were fasting and praying. Until one early morning, my mother said, Ah, God, if you are for real, show up. After 60 days fasting and prayer. Early morning, 5 a.m., my mom felt the presence of God enter the house. If you, this one is not, you need to go beyond Father, bless me. Father, cover me. Just be covering me and covering me. <laughs> Father, anything that I've done, forgive me. Even the thing we did and the one we did not do. <laughs> you, you know, you, you are operating in person. You have not engaged presence. In that presence is fullness of joy. <laughs> At his right hand, what? There are what? When you engage the presence, the things in the right hand will come out. There is something you are looking from God. There is something you are asking of him. After this service, the presence of God will release it to you. Listen to me. Listen to me. It was that engagement that all of a sudden, I still say it, many of you know, the person that signed the paper for my mom to enter the U.S., my mom has gone see her. When you engage presence, things will shift. You, don't, you are not even understand what I'm saying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You, did you hear what I said? I said the person that said come. My mom had never seen her. She's in New York. Eh? We are in Texas. No see. The person said don't worry madam. Just go. Don't thank me. Thank the God that made it happen. Yeah. What I'm trying to make if you and that was the dimension the centurion was. He said, I have met the person. I need the presence. Speak your word. I know my servant will be healed. I am not qualified to have you under my house. He said, I am a man under authority. I said to one, come and he comes. I said to him, go and he go. I need presence. I need. Tell your neighbor, I need presence. I need. If they're not talking to you, look for them every day in presence. If we did not engage presence, you will not have a pastor in San Antonio. No, 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 no. no. You see the pastor jumping up and down. He took presence yeah. to bring something. Yeah. Okay, sit down, let me tell you. Mary. Where I came from, they call her Mary. <laughs> was a virgin. Nothing. 
Nazareth. Nothing. Until one day, an angel showed up. He, the angel came. See the way the angel first manifested. He said, hey, highly favored. The Lord is with you. Even the way the greeting came, you will know that something is about to happen. You know what the Lord showed me yesterday? He said, many times I have shown up to my people, but they missed me. God told me life. He said, I showed up in some services. Some people missed that. Mary said, Oh, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. He said, Look, you will have a baby. This is how can this be? I am a virgin. It is not common. You don't understand. There cannot be a manifestation of pregnancy. I'm still engaged. We have not had honeymoon yet. He said, Forget honeymoon. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. <laughs> the power of the highest shall over when presence overshadow you your body will begin to produce I pray for someone today let the power of the highest come upon you you didn't hear me I said let the power of the highest come upon you as you shout amen let there be a divine manifestation divine manifestation divine manifestation if you believe in wave your hands and shout hallelujah yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. Yeah. Down. that was how little mary mary started to shine mary put nazareth in the map if you go to Israel today and you go to Nazareth, the first house you will go, me, African boy from Okunzu. <laughs> you don't know my village. You see, I mentioned it, you don't know. When I went to Nazareth, I was looking for Mary's house. Even when I wasn't sure, even if, don't you understand, that you reach Nazareth, what are you going to go find? You were looking for one house that somebody had a presence. Oh. But the truth is this, this. This is not the only place the angel came. Why did the angel not go to Zachariah's house? Eh? The angel visited Nazareth but came to one person's house that received the presence. And things changed. Somebody I came here to tell you, in this month of October, the angel that visited Nazareth will visit your house. If your amen is greater than your neighbor, you shall be first in life on this day. Can I preach for five more minutes? See that? I came prepared though. Think you came here to shout? <laughs> we have been in this day for a while. Hear me, child of God. The third thing you must understand is that when there is manifestation, I told you the first one is person. Second is what? The third one is power. Tell you about power. So, so, so if you don't catch person, encounter presence, no power. You see, people want the power of God. Power, power nothing. It's an aberration to contact power without contact. Even the woman, are you hearing what I'm saying? Even the woman of the issue of blood I was preached to her today. Did you not hear? She said, if I will but do what? Touch. So there was some contact with pres person and encountered presence. And there was release of what? Power. power. I'm not going to dwell on power today. The fourth dimension is glory. Hallelujah. That's why I'm going to end my preaching this morning. Tell your neighbor, person. person. So we're talking about manifestation. The first one is person. Somebody say person. person. Second presence. Person. Third, what? 
fought what? Glory. That's why he said, and the glory of the Lord shall be what? Revealed. So let me tell you, glory is in the dimension of revelation. Oh. For you to encounter the glory of God, glory of God has to be revealed. Revealed. But you must encounter this God in all these three phases for you to see glory. John 11. That's my final reference as I bring this to a close. In John 11, there were two ladies called Mary and who? Martha. The Bible makes us understand that their brother called Lazarus was sick and they sent a message to Jesus. Jesus, the one that what lovest, lovest is sick. Go read John 11. You will discover that there was a specific reference that was made there. They said, this is the woman who anointed the feet of what? Jesus. <laughs> the interesting thing is, that event happened in chapter 12 and 13. It didn't happen in 11. But scripture was able to call it forth. That tells you, God recognized when you touch him. Stay with me. The one you love is sick. So Jesus said, oh, he's sick? Jesus said, yes, it's okay. Jesus chilled for two extra days. And they, you know, they were, I guess they would have been upset. Jesus, the one you love, is sick. Jesus stayed two extra days. If he's, if, he's, if he's in San Antonio or some places in the world, the people will say, ah, so pastor, you didn't come to visit me. Eh? I leave that job. You are no more my friend. How can you not find me when I am sick? But Jesus stayed how many days? Extra days? Two extra days. And the next minute, Jesus said, oh, oh. Lazarus, our son, our, our friend, he's sleeping. Let's go wake him up. So the people, so one of, you know, those disciples, when you really read what's coming up from there, you know that they don't, they were in the midst of person and presence. They didn't know who they were dealing with. You know, it, it pains me when you have believers that have, they say they are Pentecostal. They are in this place. And you dance and you sing, but you don't know the Jesus you are serving. That's why it's so important. That's why Paul was saying that, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You, in this walk with God, you, it cannot be ham and cheese and convenience. You know, people have taken away sacrifice from their walk with God. That's why we don't see power. You, everything can, your walk with God cannot be a thing of convenience. Oh, the way I want it. You know, they were in America, everything just bring it at my feet. It, that's not the way it happens. You got to work it out. Tell anybody you got to work it out. Jesus stayed two extra days. And the Bible says that he said, no, no, no. He now told them literally, Lazarus is dead for real. For, for real, he's dead. Let's go wake him up. You know what Thomas? Thomas said, oh, he's dead. Let's go so that we can go and die with him. I just looked at Thomas. I said, which kind of man? He said, Do, let me tell you this. Sometimes when you hang around Jesus and you don't know Jesus you will speak like someone who doesn't really know him your expression will be off topic the things you say people will almost be asking are you sure you are a disciple because you never engaged Jesus you don't know this Jesus it's a dangerous thing to be a Christian and not really have a deep encounter. And that's my challenge for you. You need to, you need to step out of the sidelines. You've stayed on the reserve seat for too long. 
Tell anybody you've stayed on the reserve seat for too long. What of God declared that Jesus said, It is good that this thing happened. Jesus did it intentionally to teach the disciples something. What was it? What I'm trying to make you understand is if you want to encounter the glory of God, it is progressive. It's not instantaneous. It is pro- tell you, it's progressive. Before now, they have seen the healer. They see the healer. They see the one that changed water to wine. They see the one that multiplied the loaves of bread and two fishes. But they didn't have an understanding of this Jesus as the resurrection and the life. So let me tell you, if you want to see the glory of God, some flesh must die. (laughs) For no man sees God and live. Oh. You didn't hear me now. I just dropped something deep now. If you want to see the glory of God in a certain area of your life, that area must die. Because it cannot be alive and see God in the flesh and live. When Moses says, show me your glory, what did God tell him? He said, you cannot see my glory. He said, because no man can see me face to face. He said, the only thing, he said, you, I will cause my goodness. So if you don't die to self, the best of God you will see is goodness, not glory. I don't know whether you understand. If you want to see the glory of God in your finances, you must die to money. Money must mean nothing. I don't know what I understand. If you are holding oh, this money, they always ask for money in church. Oh, yeah. You can kiss glorious manifestation of money. <laughs> Goodbye. You ain't gonna see. You is somebody hearing me? You must come to that point in your life. Let me tell you, the people that chase money, they never get it. All of us have been chasing it. You think you're the only one that's chasing it? You know, <laughs> do you, all the people that immigrated, what do you think they came to do? They, they came to look at the upstairs of America. No. <laughs> they came for something. They came for something. Even the people that are here, you think you love it more than them? They've been chasing it. <laughs> chasing it. That they chase it into credit card. <laughs> Many of us don't know what. I don't want to digress. Many of us did not know what credit card was yeah. until we changed it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to encounter and experience glory of God in ministry, eh, you must die to ministry. That's why John the Pastor, he must increase and I decrease. Go look at all the great men of God that God is using for miracles. Nothing moves them. They've come to a point that not, none of the fame Nothing moved them. One of the great men that we all know, that you know, Pastor Ia Deboye from Nigeria. You, have you seen the man? How many of you have seen the man? Many of us have seen the man. The man is just walking gently like this. He just, just, nothing. The man does not eat for 40 days. Food lacks value. Why did miracle not happen? Huh? Huh? No, tell me. You Can you skip, skip one minute? Some people begin to shake like this. <laughs> you want to see glory? You, no, I'm telling you. You want to see glory? You are, you are complaining that the service is more than one and a half hour. You are not. You not even see the G. Forget the Lord. <laughs> I got to. Somebody hear me? Are you hearing me tonight? Tell you the boy, you must die to self. Jesus said, "I set the grain of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abided alone." Jesus came, came to Martha, right in front. Martha had, ah, oh, Jesus, if you have been here, my brother would not have what? She was looking for person and presence and power. Ah, if you have been, so in her mind, all she 
understood about it was person. 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 Was she not there when a centurion that had never seen Jesus in his house said, speak a word? No, no, no. Talk to me. No, no, no. Talk to me. But every day, Jesus has been coming, but she relegated Jesus to a company that eats her food. <laughs> Some people are playing with Jesus. You know what Jesus is today? A social club. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't party. I only do church. So because you, you what you do, you do church. Did you hear the name? No, you didn't hear. You, you do church. That is to say, church is in your schedule to replace club. Not because you are looking for God. So you get hurt by church. If you follow church, you miss God. <laughs> but if you get God, you can never miss glory. I announce to you, you shall encounter the glory of God. Tell your neighbor, I shall encounter glory. If you have been here, my brother will not have died. Jesus said, ah, if you believe. He said, he that believeth in me eh, shall not die. He said, even if they die, he said, they shall live. Amen. Telling her, I am the resurrection. <laughs> Telling Martha. You know what? Jesus even said, do you believe it? You know what she said? Look at Martha's response. He said, I believe that you are the Christ. <laughs> you are the one that is to come. And that he will resurrect. On what? On the resurrection day. She was standing with the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and the life has eaten her food. The resurrection and the life has taken your offering. The resurrection and the life you have sung for him, you have danced for him, but you don't believe that he can change something in your life. Somebody that's a that's that's an error. That's a religious error. She was talking religious jargon, but did not know the God that she was serving. Jesus just looked at her and said, let us move. Jesus just left her. Say, where is Mary? Whenever you begin to miss God and begin to become religious with God and not know God, God will bypass you and look for another person. Yes. Go, go read your scripture. Jesus did not just act like, Martha, you know, you are, who are you, Seth? Let's look for Mary. So let me try another person. Huh? Look at exactly the same thing that Jesus asked Martha, asked Mary. Mary said, ah, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus did not even waste his time. The people around there began to cry. Jesus groaned and was moved. So then roll away the stone. You know what matter came again? Ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't disgrace yourself, Jesus. Don't disgrace yourself. The body has been there for days. He stay kept. Many of us in our attitude, we are trying to protect the reputation of God. God don't need you to defend him. He is God all by himself. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. If you believe it, wave your hands and shout hallelujah. Tell the ball, roll away the stone. What is that stone that you put in front? The, what is blocking glory is the stone. If you want to see the glory of God, roll away that stone. Roll away that stone of what you know. Anytime you think you know, you can't see glory. 
Did you hear me? The, is, the reason why you've not seen the glory in your marriage is because you think you know how marriage works. No, 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 no. Take, your, take that knowledge. The Bible says he makes foolish the wisdom of the wise. Eh? Take that knowledge. Throw it away. Throw, just, just believe God. Jesus said, roll it by stone. And called the man. Lazarus! <laughs> Come forth. Everybody was looking. Like you will see in this world. There are many people that are around you. They are your sympathizers. But they actually, they are not looking for your glory. You are not hearing me. They are crying that your glory has died. You are not hearing me. Oh, they are celebrating Ichabod. You think that, listen to me, not everybody that is crying with you is crying for you. Oh, yeah, some people are happy to hear that, oh, what did the doctor say? Oh, what did the doctor say? Have you gotten the bouncy report yet? So that they can tell, hey, sister, sister Selena, did you hear that? In the name of Jesus, they will not hear bad news concerning you. They will not hear. Tell your neighbor, no bad news, no bad Tell them, no bad news, no. I reject bad news. I reject bad Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. I reject shame. I reject reproach. If you believe it, let me hear your amen like thunder. Jesus call us Lazarus. Call for and the dead man came out. Listen to me. Every blessing, every healing, every breakthrough that have been locked in the grave, I see God bringing them out. I said they are coming out, they are coming out, they are coming out. They're coming out, they're coming out, they're coming out. The resurrection and the life is calling to them tonight. I said they're coming out, they're coming out, they're coming out, they're coming out. I said they're coming out in the name of Jesus. The dead man came out. Have you ever seen where a dead man, the, his eyes was covered. His hands were tied. His feet tied. You are not hearing me. But God gave life to the dead man. Do you know why? When glory shows up, the dead comes back to life. Somebody, I have good news for you. Everything that the enemy has killed is coming back to life. It's coming back to life. It's coming back to life. Open your mouth. I said it's coming back. It's coming back. I give you 60 seconds. Open your mouth. 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 Jesus said, Did I not tell you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Somebody open your mouth, lift up your hands and tell God. I shall see the glory of God. I shall see the glory of God. Open your mouth, open your mouth better. My time is up. Say, Lord, I shall see glory. Divine manifestation. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Let me hear the loudest amen today. The connection between where you are now and the glory you want to see is believing. I ask you like Jesus asked Martha, do you believe? I'm asking you, do you believe? Come on, come on, talk to me. Do you believe? Somebody lift your voice and shout, I believe. No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. I'm going to ask you again, do you believe? No, no, if I ask you, do you believe? I want you to shout, I believe. Do you believe it? Because you believe in the name of Jesus, this month you shall see the glory of God. May the resurrection and the life manifest glory upon your life. I say, may the resurrection and the life manifest glory upon your life. Upon your family. Upon your children. Upon your business. Upon your marriage. Upon your salvation. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to everything that represents Lazarus in your life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life in the name of Jesus. Shout amen like thunder. 
Lift up your hands and magnify it, Lord. Lord, today I present your people in this house. They want to see your glory. As they put their trust in you, we believe that you are the resurrection and the life. Do in the life of your people what no man can do for them. Today, I pray for you in this month of October, you shall see the glory of God. I release God's blessings over your life. From today, everything that is dead shall come back to life. We surrender our will and our way. Not only do we encounter the person, we want to encounter your presence. We want to feel your power. And most importantly, we want to see your glory. Let it be done in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you receive the word of God today, clap your hands and give God prayer. My time is up. I don't have time. I don't have time, but I'll continue next Sunday. Amen. Clap your hands, give God praise.